What's going on, beautiful people? Today we are escaping this tank here, aren't we, Matt? Yeah. I like it as it is. Oh, it looks so bad. <laughs> okay, so don't judge me, Matt. Don't judge you. I deliberately um, left it okay. in this state so that we could show the before and after. The beautiful transformation that it will be. <laughs> so we're going to be doing an aqua terrarium slash paladarium. So I, I don't really know. Water and plants. Water and plants. But more there's plants. always... But more plants outside water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I recently stripped this down because I uh, wanted to, because it just failed. Uh, it failed in the fact that it was very black water, which for me was too black water, but others really liked it. So kind of not a fail. Yeah, not a fail, but just not your style. Yeah, not I your style. wasn't enjoying it. That's it. And everyone's taste is everyone's taste, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Um, so what we've got to do is clean this whole thing up. The filter isn't even running, but there's a substrate system already which is meaning that the, the, what am I trying to say? I have no idea. Basically the fish is safe. Yeah, the fish are okay. <laughs> the fish are safe. The fish are coming out anyway, but um, yeah, we need to clean this whole thing up. There's loads to do. Should we just, yeah, let's just get on. Yeah, let's crack up because this, yeah. <laughs> So today's video is proudly sponsored by API and Aquarian, as you can see in this shrine of products that I've got behind me. And many of you know that I've been sponsored and I've been supporting these companies for going on four years now. Now that's for good reason. The products are very, very good and they work very well. So I use all the products you can see here all of the time, like root tabs are pretty much using every setup. We won't be in this one today because there isn't any sort of substrate system going on and all the plants are gonna be feeding off the uh, water column, but every other one, I always use these. The rainbow tank here is a great example. I set this up six months ago it grows so fast that I have to constantly be hacking it back, which for me is a pain, but if you've got one tank, then that's actually what you want. Lots of growth of plants means happy, healthy fish. Now, if you've got bigger fish like rainbows, then make sure you've got the surface agitation going on as well. You do need that gas exchange if you've got a ton of plants with bigger fish. Again, it's the same with this one, which is a recently set up tank that I did for the uh, angelfish you can see here. I fully utilized the root tabs and leaf zone as soon as the tank was filled with water. And that leads to fantastic plant growth again, all of that just looks after the fish and makes everything so much easier. I also use Quick Start, which is beneficial bacteria at the start of every tank build. It's like a cheat code for me. I never get fish losses when I use this, but I also combine it with the Freshwater Master Test Kit as well, just to make sure that everything's in the, in the right levels. With these two combined on a startup of a tank, I don't think you can go wrong. This tells you if you need to change your water, but this makes it so you probably won't have to. And I feed all of my fish a combination of the aquarium food that you can see here. Flake is the predominant one that I use for the majority of them. I use the sinking pellets for quarries and larger sort of cichlids as well in combination. And then the algae wafers are just perfect for any bristle nose. I even use them for shrimp and some of my cichlids that like a bit of vegetation as well. So yeah, once again, thank you very much to API and Aquarian. I'll be using quite a lot of these products throughout the video later on. But for now, back to the build. I didn't know if you press. It says record. Oh yeah, it says record. Yeah, like I'm recording now. This is great and Matt's because I don't always have to be behind the camera. Mm. Although some of you might prefer that. Yeah, I think it looks better with me in front of the camera. <laughs> we'll take it in turn. I'm more photogenic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Matt's had a fresh cup, you see. Ah, yeah, yeah, no, it's... Yeah, they're good work. They don't, you yeah. didn't mention it, though. <laughs> I did want to mention it because it just seemed a bit weird. Yeah, to be fair, yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, the whole tank is clean, clean it's just a bit of a background. These yeah, lights, though, I'm changing them because when I set them up... Uh, we? When we set them up, I didn't. we didn't do it right. No. Uh, the old style of these, this is how you set them up, but the new style, you have them, this is probably going to go off or something, you have them upright, and then these, like, go 45 degrees, 90 degrees, yeah. and then the light hangs down, so you get more height. So it's like an angle bracket sort of thing. Yeah. yeah now, okay. I would just take the parts from this that come with the kit and uh, redo it, but I threw those away. Yeah, standard. You don't need them. Don't care. I don't even remember the parts being in there. I don't think they were. They definitely were in there, because I remember <laughs> going, what's this bag of stuff? Sure. <laughs> Yeah. So I bought new ones that have got the right hand kit, so we're going to get those put on now. Here are the lights. Don't need that. Coke for you don't need that. Yeah, should we not check the parts are in there? Don't worry about the parts. No, we're okay. But that is exactly what we're worried. Yeah, don't blame you've got more. This is the little bag of tricks that I always threw away. 
right this is the bit that i need so that goes in the top whereas before i was screwing that directly in the top which is not the way to do it that goes through there that then goes through there and then your end cap which is what i always wondered what this little bit was for <laughs> goes on the end so yeah Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh my god, that bracket is so much that. It is. They actually look nice, now, don't they? They do. Right. Oh no, we have got the old do blade. Oh yeah, we have. There you go. Is that doing them both? Maybe. So there's a remote, but there's also like a thing on the ear. Because a remote is nice, yeah? Yeah. I want buttons. You want buttons? I like buttons, because these get lost, because I'm terrible. That is a rabbit point, yeah. You throw them away. <laughs> Not even that you lose them. You're like, I won't need that. <laughs> Fine. Just chuck it. Right, that's enough farting around. Yeah, if we do something exciting now. Yeah, the, the boring bits are done. Um, the filter stuff we'll get to later. But this, remember, is going to be out of water as much as it is in water. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So we need to start with building up a whole retaining wall for that back section. And for that, we're going to use gravel, obviously. Yeah. But I've got down here, look, Matt, which I'm sure you already know. But well, this is all moved because I'm getting in behind. I have got a ton of the black lava rock. Oh, nice. So we're going to go with that. Um, loads to be able to use, to build up. Good sizes as well, so they can interlock. This stuff just grips together like you wouldn't believe as well. But first it's the... <laughs> what was that look? <laughs> well, look, no, it's just when you flash the camera on me. I don't know what I'm meant to say sometimes. So first we need the gravel down, like a base. But we don't have to, actually. I can start with a little bit of... Because of the nature of that um, lava rock, we can just start building up. A layer. And now they can fill in around the edges with the gravel, there's no problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I want to do like the shape though. I want to do sort of like a concave slightly out and then concave and then slightly out. Like a W. So it's like... Yeah, like... Oh, hang on, I wouldn't even sh s s do that again. So like... Sorry, hang on. So, so we're going in. Yeah. So then we're coming out. Yeah. And then we're coming in. Yeah, then we're coming out. Not not as exact, but you know. Yeah, I don't need. Yeah, you can't have the pinnacle in the middle because that just look wrong. Yeah, just off center. Just off center. Yeah, it's rule of turds. That's it. Did I ever say you? the rule of turds? <laughs> I think I did. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole different take. Yeah, let's just get stacking. Yep. So we've laid down the first line. It might look like Matt was doing all of that, which he was, um, but I was sort of directing from this side because it's so hard, isn't it, to skate it, from behind? Uh, so tricky. Like, yeah, get me. But it's all right. I think it's come out behind, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We might not have enough rock to build up a full wall there. That's a bit bright. Hang on. Yeah, we might not have a full like amount of rocks to build up, but that's okay because intertwined in all this, we're now going to put bits of wood as well. Yeah, I think this will work because yeah, if we build it up and, and then lock those in, not that piece because that's really- You don't look that. No, it's too straight. It's so straight. It is, isn't it? And it, oh, it's cut side as well. Yeah, yeah. Right, we'll just keep going now and just building up those layers. Okay, so more like this. We've got the wood pieces in and then you're just filling in gaps with the rocks. Now the thing is, if we keep stacking up, it's all going to come tumbling down as it's just done a few times already. <laughs> so I'd just like to say that mine didn't. No, yours didn't. No, I did it twice. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because it's going to do it on camera. I'm going to smash it on camera. Yeah. Yeah. So the trick now is now that we've got a bit of a retainer wall to fill that back section with coarse gravel, then the water can still flow through it and all of that. Yeah. You'll get some detritus and things like that in there, but it's not an issue. Like it'll add as a filtration system. The planting scheme should, they should get their roots into that and any nutrients then will be pulled out anyway. So even if there is to try to some fish waste back there, it'll be a food source for them. Yeah, definitely. Especially with the plants we've got all coming out of the top of the water. Remember, the roots go nuts underneath. They'll just fill the whole gravel system at the back and pull out everything. But yeah, gravel in now. Oh yeah, we definitely need more. Um, I should note that if you're worried about scratching your glass, then don't do it as we have. Yeah, but it's the back, so it's fine. It's the back and the bottom. You won't see it. Once the plants are in and everything. I don't think everyone else will feel that way, though. I just protect the front pane and the side. Yeah, so yeah. The, the rest of them are a pain. Hey. Uh, yeah. hey. Okay. 
There we go. So you see there, the layering at the back is built up and it's just filling all the gaps as well because it's so it's coarse enough that it closes gaps but it doesn't come through so that's why I always start with that really coarse gravel it's very very cheap as well so if you can just pick that up from anywhere I think everywhere has that don't it yeah I think everyone in England has that because it's like Flintstone or something not the uh, not the actual yeah <laughs> yeah we <Yeah>. never do <laughs> we <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah if not, just any coarse gravel will work fine. Any it's always gravel, like or... limestone, I guess. Yeah, that's it. Any sandstone or limestone you want to be careful of, but anything else will be fine. Yeah, granite, cheap granite, okay. filler. Granite. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we are coming along now, aren't we, Matt? It's going, isn't it? Like, it's, it's funny how I put a big piece this side of that wood that's kind of dark, it's been stewing in a tank. I put that that side and it looked weird, but then once we had all of this wood exploding that side, that just works. We've got tons of swim room at the front. Water level is gonna be about, and let me step back. Water level is gonna be about this sort of height. And we're in. <laughs> yeah. So we're now, we've got that middle section that's kind of open for the fish to swim back to. And then the top here, we're just filling in areas now where we can put the uh, top plants. I might even stick a bag of aqua soil in there, Matt. That's not a bad shout, actually, isn't it? That side and on this side. So beneath this wood. So there's gaps everywhere for the for the plants to be able to stick into and it will lock them down, hold them upright. So we're using the wood as like a scaffold, if you want, for the, um, the plants to come out the top. We've done, we escaped. Look at that, that's insane, isn't it? Looks like a proper like cave river banky sort of, oh, it's great. Oh, see, I was, this is what I was gonna do anyway, but it's just so much more fun when you're here. Of course, why wouldn't it be? <laughs> that's why I messaged back yesterday. I was like, I've got a really cool idea for a tank. Do you wanna come do it with me? He was like, yep, yeah, see you at eight. <laughs> Look at it now, there's some stuff going on that I hadn't even thought of, Matt, that's accidentally. You see how this this branch here yep. goes in line with that one? Yeah. And it, gives like a perspective. Yeah, it's good, oh, isn't it? And it probably looks like that's going deep in that channel. Yeah, it looks like it's coming from the tree at the top almost, and it's growing yeah. out and yeah. under. Yeah, all links up. So for this one, I want a decorative sound in the front that's just nice and shallow. And for that, I've got uh, my favorite. You know my favorite. I do know your favorite. I don't think it's cool. <laughs> it's the same as this one I've used here in this tank that I'm currently building as well for my quarries. It's like ADA La Plata, but it doesn't. you don't have to get a mortgage out to, to own a tiny bag. <laughs> So here is the sand. I just want a fiddle out the front and we'll just put a little bit thicker at the back where those rocks meet. That's expertly done right there. I'll just chuck it in. There's no point being messing about with it, is there? <laughs> but we could get your brush out. That's way too bright anyway. Hang on. They need to see the actual colour. I keep saying everything's too bright. Maybe we should just turn the lights down. Yeah. Or use a different sand. No, 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 this is good. This is like the most naturalistic. So because there's no substrate in this, obviously we're not planting in this section, it's purely for decoration. Um, should show the fish up really nice as well. But it's gonna be mostly epiphytes on all of the, uh, all of the decor. Is that a good word there, Matt? That's the beautiful The word. decor. There we go. There is our sand foreground. Don't worry, once the water's in, it will look less sort of blinding. Um, I've, <laughs> I've got um, a new decorative, stones to go do we go decorative stones on the edges or do we just keep it like that i quite like the clean look but i like, always add them later that's true i like the clean but i like the clean because it's it's clean on the black yeah and that's the problem that you do something like this you're like i like the clean and then you fill it up and you're like it just needs that extra little bit let's leave it for now oh. <laughs> let's leave it for now let's leave it for now should we try a little sprinkle that we could always remove no because that's never gonna work because i'm just gonna go <laughs> Because you can't really get the... It's a bit like when you know you get those tester pots for your house for yes. your painting. Yeah, yeah, and you do a little square. It doesn't give you the same... You have to cover at least half the wall with all of the tester pot. Yeah, before you decide you don't like, you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, it's a tough one. I've got actually got a really nice gravel I found yesterday. Come look at this. We're going outside. Probably can't see it here, but... Okay, so this is literally just a, a gravel you put on your driveway. But I noticed it had... Oh yeah, so there's a coarser one, there's a coarser one, and then there's, but it's not just that, it's, okay. it's too dirty to see, but it's got all the different colours. Oh wow! And it's got flat pieces as well. Oh, that's cool. Once that's clean, oh, we're not doing it. <laughs> Maybe we should do it. Let me clean some and see. I think we should clean a bit, and I think I'm now a bit more drawn to it. Okay, but right, we've now cleaned up the pieces, and you can sort of see what I'm looking, look at how good this looks, but with the little 
bits of red and that in it as well. Two two courses. Yeah, that's nice. I reckon we should go for it. Yeah, I'm I think it will look um, a little bit different then. Obviously, this is a little bit contrasting to the pure black of the lava rock, but there's going to be a lot of green all over this wall anyway. There's a lot of greys in the lava rock as well, so they might sort of tie in with these greys of the stones. I think it will all blend quite nicely. Let's, let's just do it. Why, why are we even contemplating it? Why Put it not? in. Some people be, won't like it. Some people will. Yeah. Right, let's have a grab. Yeah, no, I do like that stuff. That is all right. But like I said, we don't need a huge amount. If we just do like... Just a couple of little bits. And then we can use mainly the smaller pieces of rub just to really tie them all in together. A couple around this front of the island as well. Yeah. That. I already think that that's better. Yeah, it does. Just the transition is just it. And then the final one, again, just a little bit on top of it. I don't want to go silly with this. It's like a click fake, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe some there and on the floor. So it's missing. What? Sound ball before. No sound. I haven't said that in a while. I've not got this thing about a sound ball before. That <laughs> I just think is awful. I'm liking that. Just ties all those in a little bit, but still we've got that nice openness to it as well. Sticking with it. What we can do now is add in the plants. Make it come to life. I mean the underwater plants anyway, and marginal. Marginal. Because uh, some epiphytes can, they can go on the edge, can't they? That's basically what they're like. What epiphytes? Like Booses and Anubias. And Anubias, for instance, can Booses. go right on the edge. Booses, yeah. I think Jalfam will, but it yeah. one half struggles. It doesn't like it. It doesn't, doesn't like to be I in and out. feeling. I wonder if in the wild Jalfam's really small, like terrestrially. And then in the oh. underneath, the leaves get bigger because yes. they don't seem to support their own weight like a normal fern would. That's true. I'm not sure. But we'll just keep sticking stuff on here until it looks good now. And I've just had a plant delivery in, so we've got loads to choose from. There's lots of uh, Anubius Nana, Bonsai as well. So that's the little tiny one. We've got Monte Carlos. They can go actually on anything as well. They don't have to go to substrate. They'll pull nutrients from the water column. We've got some larger Anubius as well. We've got different ferns in there. Loads of Bulbitus, that'll look good. And then this side, we've got an absolute ton of Java ferns in here. We've got Windelof. We've got Greens as well, which is a variety from um, Aquafleur that's like proper punchy. So we can definitely use a ton. It can't pick it up because of the light, but yeah, there's so many in there. We've got loads of options. And the good thing about this type of stone and that is the gaps, like it'll just lodge in nicely. We don't really have to glue anything, which is always good. It is a nice thing not being oh, able to glue. Yes, it does my head in. <laughs> So we've prepped a ton of plants here. We've got like, so they're so good quality. Look at that Bulbitus. It's absolutely amazing. And the Windelov as well, look. Beautiful plants. So these are all from Aquafleur. You could just about see the logo right down there. Um, amazing quality. Like, these are all the plants that I use now. Not sponsored or anything, but um, yeah, I just thought I'd let you know that because they're gorgeous. <laughs> we might have got too many here, Matt. There's never too many. This is normally what I say. More is more. That's what you keep telling me. I'm not going to go too silly. If it's covering a lot, then I'm going to hold back the best I can. Matt's got some nice boost there as well. Yeah, we're... Look, I was good. I did say to Matt, let's just leave these four pots. We might not need them. Those four. Matt. Just those four. <laughs> How many pots we use there? Not that many, is it? Yeah, it's not too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About twelve. Twelve pots. Yeah, that's. that's this is bad. an affordable build. Absolutely. Yeah, this is, yes. this is all right. So in like the darker areas around this section here, I'm gonna use the brighter greens just to bring out that sort of lightness. It'll catch the light and just look good. I mean, they will stand upright as well once the um, water's in there. I'm just pushing it right into the crack. <laughs> right, please, Matt. There we go. So it's lightened up that section really well. Yeah, look at that. Now it's just a case of just continuing that and uh, trying my very best not to cover everything. <laughs> There we go, look, and there's still a little bit of hardscape. We can still see the hardscape, yeah. And they're all slow growing plants, so it won't slow cover it it won't yeah, Exactly, which is normally my problem. Uh, we can fill it up, Matt. Yeah. Or not fill it up, but fill it to where we want the water, the water level to be, yeah. Yeah. And that means we don't have to mist any of this and just crack on. I've just realized that my water bar is empty though, so. <laughs> it's all right, because there's no fish, so we can just go straight in. Rookie error. So 
So it's filled up looking good. We're about to go and have some lunch and then come back and finish off the bill because we are nowhere near done yet. But uh, as it was all filling up, we noticed a couple of spiders coming up in this section. They've already started a web, I don't know if you can see. And this guy up here settled right in and he keeps being challenged by that other small look. Where's it gone, lad? Just down lower, he's here. Oh, there he is. Here he comes. He's starting his own web. Yeah. I'm not going to take them away. That, if that's where they want to be their home, they can. Be interesting, wouldn't it, if they just started like a whole <laughs> thing up there, catching flies. Oh, how cool would that be? A proper ecosystem, then. Yeah, I'm going to have to keep, keep everyone up to date with Spider Watch. Yeah. <laughs> Right, we're back from the pub. This is all looking absolutely fantastic, but we're going another step above. What? He's been working hard while I've been out. Has it? Oh my goodness. Yeah. He's got a full-on here. He's got a full-on web going on. I don't know where. Yeah, I don't know where his mate went. I think he's there for life. Yeah, he's he's good. Man. We can get him some things. Spider update. No, what, is that what I called it? The spider update. Oh, yeah, it's now. So I have recently, uh, yesterday, while Matt wasn't here, me and my wife Kate. We were at the um, garden centre or DIY place and I selected a load of plants to go in the top in preparation. So me and Kate are uh, plant shopping. Definitely want some of these ivies in there because that'll look uh, really cool and they creep and they work well in just waters because I've done it before. Can get bugs on them, but if you keep on top of like the spray, it does sort that. Then of course we've got the peace lilies as well. Going to want a good few of these and monstera. And also, whilst we're at the DIY shop, I've noticed a selection of gravel with loads of different choices, actually. Some of them don't really work, but these down here, so it's just a normal 10 mil gravel and a 20 mil gravel. Look how good those look together. Lots of different colors, some flat pieces. I love the variation. I'm gonna get a bag of that and a bag of that. So yeah, we did end up using that gravel that I selected from the shop in the end, and I think it does really, really work. Um, it's not taken away too much from the foreground, because it's staying right back there and it shouldn't be moved around by the fish that's going in as well. But those plants, here they all are, along with Matt's breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got quite a few to choose from. I wanted to overpack it. I mean, these don't cost a huge amount of money anyway. So just bought a load of them. I think they had a deal that was like two for one or something like that. I'm not even sure. I've got all of these peace lilies here. And then I've got Ivy. And then what's this one called that? Palm, is it? Yeah, I think it's the Parlor Palm, I think its name is. Just to add a different texture, a variety. Um, but obviously we can't put them in there like this, can we? So what we have to do is wash off all the soil, but keep all of the roots. So this is all the plants prepared. You can see there, let's see here that all the roots are exposed. Uh, on that one, the roots are completely different on the palm. And then there's a little bit of soil still on the ivy, but that, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Gonna give it a little bit of nutrients whilst we're like building yeah. gunk from fish poop in the tank. <laughs> yeah. So some of you might be thinking, well, surely these aren't gonna survive in the water. This is just for the, for the video. Not true, because over here. So this is my rainbow fish tank, and this is a piece of lily, just like that one I got. It was just the same size as well. It's huge now, obviously the odd, leaf just doesn't survive but it absolutely thrives in water and you don't need a substrate with it you just put it straight in and the good thing is the water level can come above the, the roots it can go on the stalk as well and it still absolutely thrives so yes it does work doesn't it Matthew? Many times there's quite a few different plants you can do it with and I remember I bought some into the shop that time that yeah. massive couple of them and yeah. it, it just transferred over absolutely fine as well so. oh yeah they're so easy to transfer over piece of these for the win they grow massive they look green they look amazing love them just realized i didn't explain how we did that i mean it's quite simple break off most of the soil with your hands and then have a bucket of water ready and just put it in and shake it around until most of the soil has come off it's literally as simple as that so easy but it's going to transform every tank isn't it genius <laughs> thanks <laughs> and now it's just a case of finding the right area. So we've left loads of scab holding behind, look. We can just plonk it in and just rest some rocks if it falls forwards. Um, it's almost like a bulk filter. Can't, yeah, exactly. It's got all that gravel as well. Yeah. I want to put piece of leaves and stuff on each side. So a couple this side. Do it pass your piece of leaf. Yeah. Where can you see from there, Matt? Anywhere that I can see from here. <laughs> Is there anywhere there? There's here. 
Should I save that for a palm? Or something? Oh, yeah, you got palm as well. But we've just been, yeah. we've had like this. Yeah, I'm not. Then we've got up in this top corner, we've got another cup and quite a few different decent pieces of events. Well, okay, oh, well, we've got them. Yeah, we've got talent. Stick what sticks on where you think they should oh, go. I'm going in. Instantly, look, it just brings it all the way above and just gets it looking more natural. Now, what you'll probably find will happen is over the next day or two, they'll start to look like they're a bit drab. It's almost like they're converting and their, their roots that are still on there will send out even more runners and then they just perk back up. Like within a three or four days, they go absolutely amazing. Um, well, and the spider just like, the spider. he's having a drink. Oh no, 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 no it's going back up, it's going back up. He didn't like the piece of the addition to his phone. No, he's like, you've ruined it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely need to fill out this section here though. So they will try it and grow towards the light. So you can just trim any bits that are getting too long and then they'll just send out more. So it's like never ending plants. Look at that though. It literally ties in so well with what's underneath. They'll get huge as well. This whole area will be covered. I'm missing a spot there. Maybe that's the palm spot, Matt. Yeah, I think so. A couple of palms and they'll work well. Maybe just keep all of those together for that section. You reckon one clap? Yeah, it might look a bit odd putting like a, just some smaller bits the yeah. other side. Well, see, see how it goes. Hang see on. there? I can't see the gap now. This yeah. is the gap. Yep. Yeah. Now, I've never actually put these in before, but I'm told by many people that it will work. Have you seen it, Matt? Yeah, yeah. These have, I've seen these being used fairly regularly. I like that. It's got a good height. We'll have to go and get another one so I can do it the other side. I've got a couple of runners I can split off of this one. You reckon? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I can definitely thin it out a little yeah that'll work because it will just keep growing and spreading itself in there anyway that's it i can't see from the front where are we think yeah and then lower down or are you thinking that cap yeah where our hand is this yeah yeah there i think that will work well and of course the more you put into that area the more they're sort of supporting themselves all of their roots will sort of work together if you like yeah they'll hold themselves up won't they well, yeah three yeah. like locking themselves in yeah oh my goodness this looks so good this is another level right now we've got the ivy is she here is she uh, that's a new one. That is a new one. Yeah, we haven't used Ivy yet, have we? We might have done... No, I don't think we have. And now I think that's new. Now that's a new one. But uh, yeah, two <laughs> different colour varieties. And we're just... We kind of want to keep these out of the water, but some can go in. I've had it growing underwater as well. As yeah, long yeah. as the majority is out, it just sort of keeps creeping. So that adds another dynamic. But I'm thinking if we sort of try and keep it on the wood areas... Yeah, nice. Maybe a little bit over trailing. Ooh. Hey, oh, fancy. Oh, oh, hey, fancy. hey, hey, yeah. Oh, spider watch. Spider watch, where are you going? Where are you going? He came all the way down. You just check it out. Well, we're assuming it's a he. I mean, I don't even know. Is there male? There is male and female spiders, isn't oh, there? Yes. There would be, definitely. I is think it? some females are normally bigger because then some oh, yeah. spiders eat, eat the male. The and he just goes, I am for you. And I, I'm not very good with spiders. I don't know really. No, I'm all right. I'm should, I start, should we start spiders? We could start spiders. No. Katie would never come here. Yeah, exactly. My miss is, yeah. no, no way. <laughs> Did I, we're going to mix the variegated and the non-variegated into our sock. I don't know what that means. You thought variegated? What's that mean? White. Well, white, just call it white then. Because it's got white bits in it. Variegated. Like a variegated meat. I would do a bit of loop action. Look at this. I'm going to loop it round. Disrupting the spiders. I, uh, I think we've outdone ourselves. I have really liking this one. This, this is the sort of one where people will think they're professionals, unless they've seen the video. Yeah, and then, yeah, unless they've watched all the talking. <laughs> and they know that we're just like winging it every single time, but like what way to wing it? And I'm loving that depth, but we'll be able to see it a bit more when the water's clear, when we get the, the filters on. Speaking of filters, so Matt has taken the standard Oase ones instead of the usual silver ones that I use. We've basically added this plastic section in so that it goes right down into the water, which means we're going to get really, really good flow. Hey, she's there. She's there. <laughs> uh, and we also, Awazi insist on putting this front bit blue, which we really don't like. So we've painted it black and you can't see it. So that, that bit in the middle is usually blue. They might not like us saying that, but you know, it's customer, what, what do you call it? Um, satisfaction? What's it called when you like go to people for advice? Feedback. It's customer feedback yes. is what it is. A lot That's of the aquarium companies do it, where all the moving parts are a different colour, but when they're in the aquarium, you don't want them to you. be. Well, we don't anyway, yeah. but you know. And then the inlets, this is quite clever as well. This is again, was all Matt's doing. So you can see here, oh, let me turn the, all right, so right up. So this will be the inlet pipe. And then there's a tube that comes down. It's just a flexi plastic tube. 
and then we've added the strainer onto the end so it's literally there so it's going to pull the water through and it'll do a great job and you can't see it so basically all the equipment is hidden <gasps> mate wow that's when you need isn't it if oops it's like we're in the jungle here <laughs> <laughs> and today no i don't know um so now we can get that all plumbed in and uh get the water clear okay so interesting uh, developments with the uh, spider watch <laughs> So there's a strand here, you can't see it. This guy, this yeah. guy here, spider he's starting point. something here, Spy baby spider. Yeah. And big boy spider. Badass spider's up top. He's right up the top here, and has fully got this area, like he's sorted. Yeah. So, yeah, he, they might not survive with the fish we've got planned. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll be all right. Yeah, we'll see how it goes, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we've just poured out all of the filter water because it's been sat still in there for a month, and, uh, it wasn't too pleasant, was it, Matt? I liked it. Oh, it smelled so bad, like like rotting poo. Yeah. It was. is the best way to describe it. Yeah. But we've, we've rejigged it a bit, haven't we? We've, yep. uh, we've upgraded a little bit. So the Awaze filter, this is the 250, I think, which, let's face it, some people will say is under undersized for the size tank, but there's a lot of hardscape. The water level isn't even to the top. It's going to do an absolutely perfect job of what we're what we're going for and the amount of fish as well, isn't it? Easily, yeah, yeah. Easily. So what we've done, so the top remains the same. Yeah. Next one usually has coarser foam in, doesn't it? Oh, next one has got <laughs> coarse, oh, I'm pointing at black. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Next one's got coarse foam in. Yep. And then we then took out a foam and we've yep. gone with some of the uh, ceramic media. This is Crystal Max from the fish. Yep. Biological, which is going to be better than just the, the sponge, isn't it? Let's face it. Yeah, definitely. We've got some, uh, I think this is crystal clear, isn't it? Zeolite yeah. stuff? Yeah, crystal clear. Yeah, there you go. So it's a ton of activated carbon and what's the other stuff? Zeolite in theory, which is like an ammonia remover. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, it just absorbs ammonia. So when you're starting off those aquariums, that's a good thing to have in there because it just, yeah, picks up the ammonia and gets rid of it. Brilliant. So then that's that, and then obviously you've got the top one, final one, and then you've got a pre-filter as well, which is extra fire, which takes out all the small particles. So we've pimped the filter. Is that right phrase? Uh, probably is the right phrase. Maybe you might not be allowed it, I'm not sure. Why? I don't know. Because Pimp of MTV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, 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 I don't think, hopefully they're not watching. Yeah, they'll be all right. <laughs> they'll be fine with it. Matt's now carefully trimming the pipe arc. He gets all the best jobs. No, you're good at this though. Yeah, I know. I just leave it way too long with loops in. Yeah. You know. And you're like, I'm doing it properly, which is just what I need. I think I should employ you. You reckon? There's more on that. <laughs> the filter is spilling. We're pretty sure that we've got it the right way around this time, are if we, it, Matt? If it, if it isn't right, it's your fault this time. H how could it be worth it? You were the one who told me which way to put it on, and I hate them. The fact that the air is coming out of here suggests we've got it right. Suggests we've done it the right way around. Oh, please. The whole thing, isn't it? In the filter, in the tank. Is the inlet the way you're supposed to put the, the water in? Or is it saying... Yeah, my thing is always, is it into the filter yeah. or into the tank? Because in theory, the out on a filter is then in... Yeah, anyway. I think we've got it. Yeah, I think we're right. Oh, no. What? Uh, spider update. He's getting out. No. I don't think he's gone back here, lad. He doesn't really. He's going back. He's he's going, right. He knows. He knows. Yeah. You can't see him. There he goes. He's going back here. Yeah, you, you're safe there. This is a haven for you. Yeah, he's going to love it. At least, at least until yeah. the fish come. Yeah. <laughs> the fish might make it less haven. So obviously we've just filled the filter. So uh, the water level's dropped a little bit. So I'm going to just top that up. Okay, filter, time to go on. Now we don't need the, um, the heater. The, the filter has a heater with it, but we don't need it because the room is off temperature. Please be right. Whoa. Yes. There we go. Oh, no, we're struggling, but we'll be all right. Here we go. It's flowing. Well, that's misty, there we isn't go. it? Yeah, a little bit of mist. That'll be from that fresh uh, um, ceramic media that we've got. Oh, yeah. And we quite, do quite a lot of air bubbles as well, look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is quite a few. That's just micro air bubbles that'll clear. We'll put some uh, AccuClear in this, and it will be clear in no time. Now we haven't got a surface skimmer, but what you can do, which works really well, is just raise the outlet a little bit like this. And Matt's gonna stick under this- uh, I've got a shrimp tube. Little shrimp tube from Superfish as well. Sticks it under there, look. 
and then we get that surface agitation which will just take all the particles underneath and the filter will collect them. So it's now been four days since me and Matt set this up. Matt and I, like people keep correcting me for that, but I just always think Matt and I sounds weird. Matt and I, I don't know. Anyways, it's been four days. It is doing fantastic. Like the water is crystal clear. We're ready for fish. Look at that. We've got gin clear water. Surface is all looking good as well. The stage is set really. There's nothing left to do apart from go and get them. But uh, just before we do, I wanted to give you a spider update. Sadly, I don't think the spiders are still here, which Kate is, is glad of. <laughs> she did not want the spiders in here. Look, did you do a smile then? Because everyone says you have to smile. You know, it's because you have the camera in my face. Oh, sorry. So yeah, the webs are still up here, but there is uh, no spiders. Maybe they're still amongst there, I don't know. Um, if you can see some smoke, it's because we've got some nice incense going. Um, something that I saw at ADG when I was there and it makes the room smell nice. Kate thinks it smells like grandma's houses. <laughs> anyway, let's go get some fish. Hello. <laughs> Morning, Matthew. How are we? This is great because I've got this microphone. I don't have to mic you up and we can genuinely, genuinely start. What's up? Well, that's exciting, isn't it? It is. So when I put up the photo whilst we were filming it the other day, I was like, I'll oh, guess the fish going in. And quite yes. a lot of people guessed what the plan was, which would be to reintroduce the clouded archer fish, but not the same ones because they went a long time ago, didn't yep. they? Yeah, they were chunky and yeah, we got some small ones in. So I think that'll be cool. That's what we were saying. I, I, we want a few. Yep. Uh, but we can also whistle down later as they grow if need to. But yeah, to start with, it'll be quite good to get... Yeah, I think there's a nice little group. So um, they've had a bit of argument with each other. Oh. So I think there's a couple that will leave here. Um, <laughs> Normally ones. Yeah, they've just been arguing. So there's a couple with a couple of like little smith fits. Oh my goodness. Yeah, a good. nice little group of them. Yes. I, reckon, I reckon there's six or eight good ones that aren't arguing with each other. These are immense. And they're cool, aren't they? Yeah, they're a type of knife fish that Martin has just ordered it. I can't remember the species name of them, but I'll yeah. take all three. Yeah, they're <laughs> cool, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, so, cloud, so clouded arch fish. Yep. I think we want a few quarries down the bottom, don't I we? I mean, say, so, yeah. Or not necessary quarries, but, but yeah, something quite dwelling. Yeah, we've got some ledges, actually. I think we've got some ledges on the far side that'll be quite cool. And they'll be a little bit different, like some um, Shastura ledges. So, yeah. Well, let me show you. Okay. Look at you, director, now as well. Oh, they're here, no. I like that. Oh, no. I like that. You get it now. You can get it. <laughs> You, this is so much easier to film because you know the, the I plan. Know what I'm doing. So. Yes. Still got them. Oh, yeah. They're cool little guys. Yes. They're going to do a good job clean. Am I going to see them? Yeah, yeah. So those are like a river loach. So they are quite outgoing. They're a bit like a cross between a hill stream loach and a corridorus. But okay. probably the easiest way to describe them. So you should see them fairly often buzzing about in the bottom of the tank. Um, so I think they'll be cool. Yeah. And then, surely? Yeah, we need something of a shot. Something we, isn't there. That'll help the, the archfish as well feel a bit more comfortable. Yeah, that's it. That'll bring them out a little bit more, make them feel a bit, a bit more sort of, yeah, settled in that. Not sure what to go for, though. It's a hard one. We need to have a thicker bodies. Yeah, deeper bodies so that the archfish can't... Um... Look, I'm doing your job now. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, no, I, no, I'm... T remember, no, I'm... Spot? No, usually <laughs> you're telling me exact fish that we need and yeah. I'm the one going well we need so many deeper body because yeah. I'm learning yeah that's I'm good. learning go on. you'll be able to go and do your own fish keeping one day with you <laughs> <laughs> so let's not get silly no, let's start because I forget as fast as I learn that is it there's a lot of information isn't there yeah as there, there's so many we've got drake fin barns we've got some cool tetras it depends whether you want to keep area specific or whether you want to go a bit more tetras. I suppose if you're willing to put Corydoras in, then you're not able to bother. Exactly. I'm not worried too much about area specific. I just want something that'll be cool, and interactive, and fun, like these puffer fish. No, <laughs> they'd be cool. They just wouldn't be very nice to each other. With the great colours on them now. They're cool, aren't they? So big. They're great, aren't they? Look at them. So finish seems good. They don't seem to be. Are good as much, no, Matt? Uh, yeah, they're getting there. They're getting there. We sold a couple of the bigger ones. So a couple uh, of the bigger ones went. And then I think the group has now sort of stabilised and settled down a little bit because there was a couple of chunkier ones. So, okay. yeah. But no, we've got Kentazona barbs. We've got gold barbs. Those barbs are nice. Yeah. Those barbs are very nice. I think something like that could work really well. Because obviously I'm now a barb breeder. 
That, yeah, absolutely. By complete accident. Barb aficionado. Who, everyone's like, don't put fish in with turtles, they're eating. Mine of reading. Yeah. I think it's one of those things, you set up the tank right, with hiding spaces and a swim room and stuff, it's, it works. And you get a turtle that's like super cute and non-aggressive. <laughs> that's it. So many people try and put them into like a little 40 litre tank though, and they'll have a turtle with really slow moving fish and the tank will be barren. Yeah, well, and yeah. Of course, yeah, there's nowhere for anyone to hide, so. We're not here for that though, those rainbow, oh, they're, no, they're not rainbows. The Tetris. The Tetra. Yeah, lovely, aren't they? Oh my goodness, I thought they were rainbows. Yeah, golden top combo Tetris. Because they're next to the rainbows, that's why I'm getting confused. That's it. Yeah, we got some nice Tetris. And oh, no, we don't need rainbows, we don't need to get rainbows. We've got some nice copii Tetris up here, which are a little bit chunkier. They get that like iridescent green and red tail to them. Is that a as well? No, they're a rainbow. Oh, yeah, they're rainbows. Yeah, yeah. None of this is going in because look, I'm all. Because you're, you're talking absolute rubbish. But Danios would look good in there. Danios. What you said about that? Yeah, I don't know if we've got any. I haven't had any for a long time. I don't think we've got any Danios. Oh, what, the, one of the most common species and you've not got them? We've got small ones, but not big ones. Nah. You want, you want to say chunky and deeper body. Yeah, we do. Oh. The okay, the like orange. Oh, yeah. There's that a pearl danio in there that would need, that would need to be moved no, no, back no. into the pearl no. tank. He can, he can come. No, look at him. He's a, he's a, he needs you, to go you back. You wouldn't allow it, would you? No, I wouldn't allow it. No, not one pearl danio in with a group of cards. To be the only problem with that one, it's great. Is they don't stop. Filming them is possibly the worst thing I've ever tried to do. That's all right. That's just going to give action to the tag. <laughs> that would be cool, though. Well, we've just got all of those, yeah. All of them. Cool. All of those. And then all of the good ones yep. the, of the uh, archfish. And then the um, loaches. And the loaches. That would be a good start, I think. It's a good no more. Good group. Yeah. Let's bag them up. <laughs> Matt's just catching them up. These are actually smaller. I'd say about half the size of the other three that I had to fall. I reckon so, yeah, about half the size. And uh, we're done with eight, yeah? Uh, yeah, six for eight. I'm going to see what the group looks like, but I see. Maybe six. There's, okay. there's definitely a group of sort of six or seven that look good, so I'll go with that. Yeah, well, I, I always go with what Matt says. He's my pro, so. But yeah, it's going to be fun because they're just going to behave so well, and that tank is near my desk, and last time they were all just uh, spitting at me. I was going to say, is your computer waterproof? Is that going to be all right? <laughs> Like, I thought the roof was leaking. Turn it around, <laughs> turn around and they're basically smiling at me. <laughs> well, we're back at the studio. We're all here. Oh, it's gone dark. Hang on. Day trip. Okay, Matthew, so you haven't seen it since we did it and it was a little bit sort of misty. Look at Kate trying to run away. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit, isn't it? But look now, Jin. It's nice. actual Jin. Hey, lovely, isn't it? Yes. I can't wait. Let's just go. Let's just crack on. Let me get the uh, black curtain set up behind us. Yeah. So we get no reflections for that optimal look. That optimal look. Oh, spider update. Yeah, I was just looking. Is he, is Web's still there, but can't see the spider the anymore. The spider has left. But it could be. It could be, it in, could amongst... be in amongst the plants. The light. Anyway, let's get some fish in. Yeah. We'll start with the loaches. So Matt is just prepping the fish. Are they ready? Yeah, we've got the little group of loaches. Loaches, awesome. So the loaches are now going in. What, what ones are these again? So these are a tiger sand loach. So they're a Shastura species. So I can't remember their second name. Begins with K and it's got a lot of vowels in it. <laughs> they look happy straight away. They're awesome. They're going to be great in there. Good size, actually. Like for this size tank, you know? Yeah, a little bit different to the quarries as well. A little bit more sort of a different shape. Yeah, they'll go. They'll colour up like that now and then. Oh yeah, they'll get proper stripes to them, and I think they get a bit of a ready, sort of ready brown tail. So now we've got the Danios. What ones are these specifically, Matt? So these are orange finned Danios. So yeah, they get sort of stripes and spots to them with them bright orange fins. They are a really nice fish, and they're so yes. fast when they settle. Yeah. Yeah, give them a minute, I reckon they're, because they're doing that hidey thing, and they're not shy fish, are they? No, not at all. Once they get sort of settled, they're going to be a big, shoaling ball in this aquarium. Right, yeah, I'm too excited to get the, get, get the clouded archer fish in. Let's do it. Right, now we've got the archers, they're getting a bit grumpy. Oh, no, they're... Oh, there we go, they're down. 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 It was my fault. Let's see, let's see how these guys go. I'm really intrigued, actually. Go on, they turn around. Oh, they're very peaceful. Look. They're going to look good. I think the water level's all right. Yeah. Just remember, I had the archer fish before way bigger than this. I probably had it about the same level, and it was absolutely perfect. They already look good. They already look coloured. Like, you know, the contrast. Yeah, they will colour up. And that's, you know, that's still juvenile coloration. So they're going to get even better as they grow up. 
awesome. So our fish are in and now is the perfect time to add APIs quick start. I use this on every single tank I set up because obviously this uh, media and everything we've got in here isn't cycled. Now we've got quite a lot of plants going on. We've got a lot of plants at the top. So that's gonna help with pulling out ammonia and nitrite anyway, but this is gonna make sure that everything is safe. It's gonna seed that whole background section as well as the filter. Yeah, it's so good. I never get fish lost with this. Brilliant stuff. So nice and easy, always a couple of Sorry, no, sorry, that's sorry, guys. Right, always make sure that you fully shake up your bottle because sometimes they can be sat around and all the stuff's at the bottom. And... Well, yeah, we don't want that. Anyway, nice and easy. For this tank, I'm going to need about six catfuls. It's a bit up for the luck. <laughs> and that will be then absolutely perfect come tomorrow morning. And sometimes if you put too much, you can get a slight sort of hazing going on. That's just a little bit of bacteria die off, but that should clear itself, but yeah. Look at this, we're away. Now we've obviously got a lot of plants in there, gonna be pulling out a lot of nutrients as well. Um, so we can actually add in some leaf zone and that's gonna make sure everything stays nice and green and just keeps growing, especially as there's no substrate in this tank. That will be the nutrients that the, the plants will be using as well as the fish poop as well. So you're sort of covering everything with the leaf zone. So leaf zone is the only fertilizer that I use. It's the only fertilizer I've ever pretty much used for like the last four years or whatever. And as many of you know, my plants do very, very well. I've never struggled growing plants. Like every single one of my tanks is just chock-a-block full of plants and I don't use any CO2 or anything like that. But uh, what I do routinely use is the leaf zone. Whenever I'm doing a water top up, something like that, I'll always put a couple of glugs in or, you know, I'm not very specific with my measuring. Maybe you guys probably should be, but yeah, I just chuck some in. <laughs> so most of the dosing on the bottles is pretty much the same. So this one is going to be six as well. Although because it is a new setup, I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to do four just because I'm going to be doing water changes and things like that, potentially. I'll come in tomorrow, and one more in this. <laughs> yeah, I'll come in tomorrow and I'll do a, uh, a water test using the, the API Freshwater <laughs> Master Test Kit. So I've always got these on hand. Ma the main reason I have these on hand is so that I can test after a new setup because after the tank's been running a few weeks with this amount of plants, like you very, very rarely get have have any issues or I never have anyway but you need to know if you do get any this will this will do that so I think it's safe to say this was our biggest success I think I think it's the best one we've done it's yeah I would say so like with the plants coming out I don't know we keep saying this though it's the best one we've done but it should be though shouldn't it because it should be I mean not every build I go for is meant to be my best one because I like doing the simple stuff for people to have a go as well but then it's different isn't it this one is completely different to that one so yeah. you could almost put them in different categories couldn't you, you yeah could almost say that's that Real rocky, hardscaping one. This one, I suppose this one's rocky and hardscaping as well. <laughs> well, you know the rules. Yeah. Wood, rocks, sand, gravel, done. Yeah. Plugs. I was going to say, <laughs> water, water, yeah. Lights, lights yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, good job. It's been fun having you. Um, you lots more to come. Yes, definitely. i um, be releasing a video shortly um, on a big announcement for me and Matt. Oh, so stay, oh. what's that? No, you, well, I hope you know. Do I? <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. So it's now been about a week since the archer fish were put in and uh, they're, they're quite shy fish. You have to be very careful with them. You can't come steaming up for the tank or they just they freak right out, to be honest. And that said, they are getting a lot more used to me. So if I come up close like this, this one, see, I'm not too freaked out. Um, these ones over here, they do know that I feed them now. It was the same with my other archer fish I had before. You've got to be a little bit more careful than usual. But if I do anything above the tank, they see it as a massive threat and that's obviously a defense mechanism. So if I come over the top like this with my hands, you can see they get really skittish and actually that's the calmest they've ever been. Normally they just start flapping and try and hide away somewhere. There's also the rest of them, look, they're at the back there. Uh, there's one of the Danios. Hang on. Oh, he's gone. So the, the Danios are quite shy as well and that could be because they're not quite used to the archer fish as well, can see them as a potential threat. The loaches though, absolutely loving life they're always out in the front just tearing around everywhere they're quite fun to watch they have little spells of being nice and still like they are there and then all of a sudden they'll just go nuts and all start swimming together in one big group which is kind of strange um, and then they just tear up the uh, corners as well of the tank so we do see the daddy o's sort of rarely as said but they do come out quite a bit when we feed so i'm going to add in some food now and like all my fish i feed a flake 
flaked, well not all the fish, I mean for these kind of fish, the flake's perfect, it will sit on the surface and that's actually where the archer fish feed from, you know, they're always at the surface looking to spit out of the water and I'm kind of thinking that's where the spiders might have gone. Uh, they probably shot them into the water and ate them. But yeah, let's get some food in for them, see them all come out. Now, as I said, I do have to be very careful when I'm doing this. They already know the tap and they know that that means there's food coming. So it, it started to shock them less when I put my hands above the tank. See that? See how they're a little bit cautious. I also come over this side slowly. They should go that way. There we go. And that's where the food has just been placed. Now I can put a little bit more. Try to get used to my hand movements. So I am flicking a little bit. There we go. But I think basically it's going to take some more time. These are very intelligent fish. Certainly the most intelligent fish that I've seen. Not the Tanios. I'm talking about the archer fish. They are so aware of their surroundings outside the tank and they're getting much more used to me. The first feed I did for them, they didn't actually eat it at all. It just went around the surface. They just kept their eyes on me constantly. Now I'm not too far from the tank and they're feeding. So that is an absolutely great sign. And it means that we can sort of build this relationship as we go along and they'll get more and more comfortable. And eventually I can actually train them to shoot the food off the glass. And that's what I did with the last ones. I'll put up a clip now because it's actually really exciting to see. It's so fun when you can get them to do that. He sees it now. He's, they both see it. Oh my, oh, oh my goodness, I'm trying to, they're spit, they're doing, Oh, this one's going for it down the water. No, see, tends to leave it. Tends to leave it unless it's sat on the surface, which is cool. It's a little bit different then as well. But yeah, they like that back area that we've created and they like the sides. They don't stay in this middle section like this too often. Well, not when I'm near the tank anyway, but it's great to see that they're eating. I mean, we're away really. Now I am of course going to be doing updates on this tank and also the feed training, food training, shoot, they spit. Basically these guys spit as I've shown and I've never seen these ones do it yet. I have seen some sort of signs of it with a little bit of water up on the top of the glass. Maybe some flies landed or flying around. Ever so often there's some tiny gnats in the studio. These guys will pick those off, which is great. But yeah, make sure you subscribe. There's loads and loads more to come.